top hats. Um, as you, a lot of people probably know, I've been making really quite beautiful waistcoats for rich people and very nice people to get married in. And of course, uh, people don't really wear top hats at weddings anymore, although the father of the bride and the groom uh, might. But there's no obligation for uh, people to wear uh, top hats at, uh, at weddings. Uh, so the only uh, people that wear them now is where you have to wear them, which is in the enclosures at Royal Ascot. Now, you can turn up at uh, Ascot in your uh, lovely brand new sort of Porsche or something and uh, not get noticed at all. Turn up in a vintage Bentley and you, you, you get admiring glasses. It's a bit the same with, with top hats. Unfortunately, the new Chinese uh, felt hats are not all that elegant. Uh, but if you haven't got a silk hat, um, you're going to have to make one of the do with those. Now, silk hats... The last one was made, I think, in 1963. I think it was Herbert Johnson made the last one. It's a special silk velvet, and 1963 is when the velvet ran out, so I'm told. Now, it's not an ordinary velvet. It's, um, if you imagine, velvet is like a, a, a lawn that's just been mowed, and, uh, but the silk plush is, if you imagine a lawnmower that does one long blade and one short one, one long one, short one, that creates a wispy effect that you can brush around uh, on a, a cardboard frame uh, and make a nice nice hat out of it. So this really beautiful stuff which will never ever be made again. Now there was one guy who supplied the whole world with this silk plush, some French chap, and I think the machine was being moved from one place to another, it got dismantled, it just never got mantled again. Uh, now the British government heard about this and Diplomatic hats and Royal Naval uh, bicorn hats and things have this same silk plush on the sides. And the British government or somebody, Home Office or whatever, said, OK, oh boy, what's it going to cost to get you back in business? I think the price he gave them was like, we can get a battleship for that kind of money. So that was it. That was the end of black silk plush. It will never happen again. So we'll never see the skills that went into making uh, this kind of hat and we'll never see this material again. Uh, I've often thought uh, that on one of my trips to China, I'd like to tackle some uh, Chinese hat manufacturer and, and make a nice, lightweight, felt, elegant shaped hat with a proper leather uh, lining uh, headband and a proper silk uh, thing. Now, silk is really cheap in China. I mean, it doesn't cost even one pound to put a real silk lining in. and. They've got a lot of pigskin in China, they eat a lot of pork. So, you know, pigskin lining instead of a plastic one would be much nicer. This hat is supplied to Harrods, uh, but I can tell it's made by Locke. Uh, I recognise this this white uh, um, sweatband in, in, inside. Uh, that's uh, Locke signature. So uh, when Locke used to make hats, uh, I think this was one of theirs. Uh, these sell on size. If you've got a big head, you might be in a long queue uh, waiting for a size seven and a half, and you might have to pay thousands for it. Um, if you've got a very tiny head, you might pick up one for a couple of hundred pounds. This one is about my size. It's a seven, seven one eighth, but it's not the right shape. See, that's a problem with top hats. Not just getting the right circumference. It's got to be your head shape as well. There was a thing called a conformator. Uh, for people that did bespoke hats, made to measure hats. I'm going to go into that later because it was quite fraudulent. But uh, yeah, this hat sort of fits me, but rocks from side to side because it's a bit too wide and not quite long enough for my long head. So I can put it on, but it's, it's a bit contrived to get a, a nice fit. Uh, they get dusty uh, if you uh, keep them out of the box. And what you give them the white with is not as any kind of stiff brush and never get any water on them. Uh, but quite often you were supplied like a little velvet pin cushion and you use that to wipe counterclockwise around the, uh, around the hat. I'm going to use the sleeve of this old, uh, already slightly damaged velvet jacket. And just a soft velvet rag like that will take all the dust out of it and uh, leave it nice and uh, combed in the right direction. You might even see the dust coming out of there. It looks like smoke coming out. And again, counterclockwise around the hand, and you put a nice shine on it, like that. And uh, in the top, so get all that dust off the top there. And that looks 
a little bit better. Now, top hats can sort of lose their blackness, especially the, uh, the, the felt band around there. There's a product um, that's made for uh, sort of toning up black suede shoes. Very high viscosity. Does say on the can, cannot harm any fabrics. And if you give your hats, it also works on felt bowler hats. If it's a little bit grey, give them a spray with that, let them dry off, and it really uh, <laughs> makes them look ten times as good. I'll, I'll show you, uh, on another video. I'll uh, I'll show people how to do that. We get these old hats. They've uh, frequently got initials actually uh, stitched onto the, uh, uh, the the band on the inside or uh, just stuck in like that. Uh, Hats look pretty similar, so when you uh, go to the cloakroom, you want to make sure you get your own hat back, and uh, so people would put their initials in.